the purpose of Wealth Talk is to educate, inform, and hopefully entertain you on the subject of building your wealth. Wealth Builders recommends you should always take independent financial, tax, or legal advice before making any decisions around your finances. Welcome to episode 144 of Wealth Talk. My name is Christian Rodwell, the Membership Director for Wealth Builders, and I'm joined today by our founder, Mr. Kevin Whelan. Hi, Kevin. Hello, Chris. Great to be with you again. Yeah, and we're actually recording this on video today. So um, we'll be posting this on the socials so you can see behind the scenes of uh, how we put these podcasts together. But uh, we're back today with a member spotlight. And uh, this member has been with us for 18 months. It's Andreas uh, Loiseau. And uh, Andreas, I think, is a, a really good example of how the process of building wealth works, which is kind of slow and steady, wins the game. Yeah, I remember a story about that, the tortoise and the hare, isn't it? Something like that. <laughs> but, you know, wealth is um, more often, and you'll hear this in the interview, it's about waiting for things to happen. You know, you've got to plant seeds and then let those seeds germinate and then let the seeds grow and then you reap the rewards. And sometimes the seeds fall on stony ground. And I'm not trying to be biblical about this. I'm just trying to say sometimes things work. Sometimes they don't work at all, but sometimes they take a little bit of time. And then you get a nice boost. In this case, he had a super little boost, didn't he? Of six units all in one go, a little boom of opportunity. And that's really, you know, why I like this story, because it doesn't sound the most exciting. Nothing dramatic happened in a, um, you know, in a life-changing way, but it's changing his life. It's changing his life in positive ways, as you'll hear. And uh, I just hope that uh, people can recognize that we don't have to go ranks to riches, but we can go steady and sure and build wealth. And we can do that for most people within three to five years to get them to a place of complete independence. And 18 months in, and he's well on the way to security. And and I think he said himself, as you listen, I will make that figure in 2022. And that's confidence. And I just love the fact that our members, once they get the process, they understand how it works. They follow it. They don't drift. They don't deviate. They don't get all caught up. They just do it. And the doingness means they build their wealth. And that's why I like this story. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's head on and uh, hear it from Andreas himself. Andreas, welcome to Wealth Talk today. Hi there. How are we? Yeah, very, very good. Thank you. Good to have you on. And uh, of course, you featured earlier this week in our Wealth Builders Academy, so the monthly members and uh partner spotlight call. So uh, it was really good to hear you share your progress recently. And we thought, well, uh, let's tell the full story on the podcast for everyone else. So uh, here we go today. So uh, as as we always like to do on these monthly spotlights, Andreas, is really just walk through the nine-step recurring revenue roadmap. And uh, we know the roadmap's broken down into three stages. Uh, we've got building confidence at the beginning, which consists of mindset, foundation, and, and getting your roof in place. And then stage two is all about building knowledge. That's where we look at the seven pillars, look at the different points of leverage, and then deciding on what's the right strategy for you to start generating income. And then the final stage of the roadmap, stage three, is all about building assets. So that's where you focus on one thing, you turn the wheel of wealth, and that should generate some capital or cash flow. And then by turning multiple wheels, um, accelerating your way towards your financial goals. So, um, Andreas, you joined us back in July 2020. So um, about a year and a half or so now. Yeah, seems quite quite long ago. <laughs> so. well, yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was a, a crazy crazy few months, hey, uh, that we had since then. So, um, okay, let's get stuck into this then, Andreas. Um, you've been a great member of Wealth Builders, and you've made some really really good progress, especially recently, where you've really topped up your thermometer. So, let's begin at the beginning, um, at step one. So, step one is all about mindset. It's about really thinking about the big picture, and also like the catalyst. So, can you remember? You know, was there a particular point, Andreas, where you said, okay? I'm, I'm going to do something about building my wealth now. Yeah, I, I think it was you know pre pre pandemic, just probably a year before before everything kicked in. Um, you know, work was becoming a little bit more you know stressful, both from a mental and physical points of view. So it was almost reaching a, a breaking point, and it you know, I think the whole pandemic. Uh, situation and working from home gave the opportunity to take a little bit of a step back to reassess 
life, you know, what's important. I think that was pretty much the the turning point for me to say, okay, something needs to give. Um, you know, one changing my role, but also from from a income security point of view, um, given the the, the the unfortunate circumstances that happened in in the pandemic, I thought you know something you know we need to be building more from a from a legacy point of view as well. So I think that was a a turning point for me in my in my journey to kickstart my my wealth uh, building process. Mm. And can you remember how you first came across Wealth Builders and, and what helped you decide to uh, to join us? Yeah, I, I think, you know, dabbling in uh, at the beginning, I think it needed a little bit more, you know, accountability and a bit more focus. And, you know, following uh, Kevin's uh, presentation at one of the networking events that I attend, um, you know, I, I thought that was something needed um, to, to provide that, that for um end-to-end process and having making sure there's there's that that focus in place i think that was the the, the bit where i came across wealth wealth builders okay so uh first things we need to do is obviously the uh the levels of wealth you know understanding how big that gap is from where you are now to where you want to get to so um obviously insecurity at the bottom then security is the first goal for people then independence where were you when you joined us andreas so I was very on the bottom scale of the insecurity. I think uh, you know, very early stages, not really meeting that 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 security level. So I was more on, on the other side when I when I first joined. Okay, great. So firmly focused on reaching security, which is uh, definitely within sight now. We'll come on to that when we look at the results in a little little later. Um, and then the other aspect of of the foundational stage is, of course, just making sure you've really got a tight roof on top of everything to uh, make sure you've protected yourself, your assets, and um, you know how important was that just to make sure that that was all in place, Andres. Yeah, I think that that was you know a critical part because I think pre pre joining wealth builders I, I did go through a, a series of you know making sure having um you know life insurance um all, all the all the works to make sure everything is watertight coming from my background as well you know uh, growing up has not been you know in terms of security as well so you know even from the pension side making sure having a nominated beneficiary if in the event something were to you know god forbid were to happen everything it's 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 watertight and also have making sure there's a will in place powers of attorney uh both for finances and welfare so that that was you know i think the crucial part before you know getting stuck into building wealth i think is always important to have that that roof in place yeah yeah very much is so that made sure that you had a strong foundation there and as you say then you can really build uh, firmly upon that so moving into stage two then andreas so looking at the assets uh, which is step four so we know the seven different pillars to build wealth which did you already have play in place when you joined us and uh, which pillars have you been able to utilize since so yeah, I think in terms of you know coming from my background in in finance and and risk management, so uh, I I did have exposure in the property pillar. Um, that that was my primary focus in terms of what I'm currently working on or worked on previously, um, but also with a bit of um, the 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 investment portfolio from stocks and shares. So th- those were the the two prominent uh, pillars that I had before joining Wealth Builders. Okay, perfect. And then once you understand which you're, you're going to be your primary, secondary pillars, then you've got to look at your points of leverage. This is really, really key. And there's different types of leverage. Uh, we know there's financial, intellectual relationship systems and time. So can you provide us with an example of how you've brought leverage into play and, and help you build your wealth? Sure. Uh, that's, uh, I think, a, a, a good, good uh, example in terms of like, where I am now, purely because of, you know a little bit time poor, and one in terms of the location I'm in, you know, using um, relationships as a as as a point, you know, utilizing that point, making sure I have the right uh, contacts in the area for me, based on my wealth dynamic as well. It, it's quite easy for me to network and build um, uh, relationships, um, which has been a, a crucial part in what I I currently do now. 
purely based on I mean in London, but all all the the investment portfolio is a little bit up north. So making sure I have trusted um, the trusted power team in in that area. So I think that's that's been uh, a, a huge benefit for me in my in my in my journey. Okay, excellent. Yeah, and. Uh... Step six is all about strategy. So there's many strategies, obviously, within property, Andreas. And yeah. um, what have been the main strategies that, that you've been focusing on to generate income? Yeah, I think there's definitely a lot of <laughs> strategies within the, the property pillar. I think that's, you know, sometimes overwhelming, um, but that's probably another topic. But in terms of my primary uh, strategy when I first started out in property was the the, the BRR uh, by uh, um refurb refinance um so that that was my you know almost my bread and butter when i first started out um but recently um you know started to get into more advanced strategies such as freehold to leasehold which is just like a, a an add-on to acquire more buy to let por- portfolios um so that those were the, the my main um my main strategies within uh my property pillar yeah yeah, and and I guess that just comes through experience and time and and just growing in confidence, right? Like exactly. you turn the wheel once on maybe a buy to let something you know relatively simple, and then you you build up and you start learning from other people around you. And I suppose exactly. being part of a community, you kind of it rubs off on you, right? Because you're seeing what other people are doing, you're connecting with other people. So um, yeah, I mean, how have you found the community aspect of things, Andreas? No, it's super useful. I think in terms of you know having a question, even like the freehold to leasehold uh, title splitting that I started doing is something new, but within the community and the support and within the coaching uh, cause that I have on a monthly basis has been pinnacle in in pinning me down and saying, okay, I have the right support uh, function within within the wealth builder builders community. Um, you know any any questions I may have, it's you know within an arm's reach of you know opening your laptop and reaching out to someone who has already done it or is thinking about it, and even partnering and sharing ideas. I think that's that's been super useful instead of being completely isolated and being on your own. Um, I think by sharing the experience and and the knowledge. I think is you know adds that added level of uh, projection in in terms of you know where you want to get to. Yeah, that's great to hear, and and that leads us nicely on actually to to step seven, which is all about focus. So once someone's chosen a strategy, like you've just mentioned there, Andreas, the key is to follow the wheel of wealth, and that means education, support, connection, due diligence, and then taking guided action. So our wealth coach is there each month to help you stay laser focused and turn that wheel. You mentioned your coaching calls there, Andreas. Give your coach a, a shout out because I know many, uh, in fact, all of the coaches listen to the podcast. So who's yeah. been helping you along the way? So, uh, uh, you know, special thanks to, to Ian Halfpenny. Um, I think, you know, starting out at the beginning and not really having a plan um, in place, you know, coming in thinking, you know, you just want to acquire property and that's that's the main goal, but that's not the objective, right? You always need to have a plan. Um, but also to Manish as well. Um, that's that's been helping me out uh, as well with with the whole um, DD side and and you know having a bit more of a focus. But super super you know big big shout out to to both of them in in terms of providing that that guided uh, support uh, throughout the the months uh, since since joining Wealth Builders. Yeah, no, that's 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 cool. And and what difference does it make, kind of knowing that you've got that accountability every thirty days? You know, you've kind of got to report something, even though it's not like being at school. It's yeah. not like oh, you haven't done what you said you were going to do. But yeah. you know, in yourself, you know that you've you've got to kind of show up, and and you've hopefully got something to share. Yeah, no, no, I think that's you know accountability and and making sure every single month you know like you said there's mon- months that you don't really have that much to report, but sometimes when you do report back and you have that monthly call with your coach, you're actually quite surprised what you've actually accomplished because you know you can easily drift as well and you know sometimes at the beginning and even now. There are moments where you have a bit of a dull moment and things are not moving as quickly as as you hope. And you know, property is 
and can be and is a slow moving vehicle. It's not something that you, you know, you go onto the stock market and you just buy shares and you know you've acquired something. There is a process, there is, you know, issues along the way. So I think it's just, you know, having that 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 awareness and accountability, I think is that's crucial. Cool. So we're really moving now and uh, into step eight, which is about results. So uh, we encourage all of our members to track their progress every 30 days using the wealth chart and by completing monthly progress reports as well. So you've had a good couple of months recently, Andreas. So tell us exactly what did you do and how much additional recurring income has that added to your wealth thermometer? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's been a really good, good month and, um, you know, it's it's been an opportunity where I've added substantial, what meaningful uh, income in my thermometer. So um, I was able to leverage the the title splitting um, strategy in, in the property pillar, acquiring six self contained units, which has enabled me to increase my my income by um, one thousand four hundred uh, net for that for that month. So everything is fully rented, money is coming in. So where I where I was, it was at the six hundred level. Now that's bringing me a, a total of of two thousand. So getting closer to that security level now, um, which is scary to think of it. Um, you know, thinking about where I was at the beginning, acquiring just one property, and thinking about you know just the one. Now you're very you know I'm getting to that stage of security, which is a, a really good um, good way of thinking about it and i think you know i'm definitely on track for for achieving that goal uh in in this year 2022 so yeah i think it all comes down to planning and making sure you've got those you know critical milestones and keeping track and and going back to you know the monthly coaching calls and and keeping track of that figure so that's that's been you know the biggest achievement i've i've achieved so far yeah, that's really good. And and uh, I can only imagine what that's doing for your confidence as well. And I guess the feeling of certainty, right? As you say that, look, things always crop up that, that, that are unexpected along the way, but you know that the process works now and you know that if you just continue to follow that, you know, how certain do you feel that you are going to hit those goals eventually? Yeah, well, I'm already <laughs> looking at, you know, uh, another project that's quite similar to this, but a little bit more in, in, in size, which, you know, it just builds your confidence and, you know, you learn as you go along, even though this was a completely new strategy, but then it goes back to the relationships and having trusted people around you and their experience and leveraging their time and experience that they've done this in, in, the, in the past. And, you know, when it comes to the next deal that I'm looking at now, already know what to look out for so you know builds that confidence and that i would say certainty but it just gives you that extra push to say actually it is achievable and i can do it even though you get those months where you are a little bit down but again having those calls on a monthly basis just you know resurrects your your focus and and hunger to to reach that that figure Okay, so that takes us into the final step then, Andreas. It's step nine, accelerate. So by repeating the process of choosing your pillar, then choosing your strategy and using leverage, you will move towards a place of financial independence. And for most people, the journey from financial insecurity to independence will take on average about five years. So what do you see as being key to helping you continue to stay focused and take the necessary steps to reach your own financial goals? continuously meeting new people and you know you you never know what is around the corner in terms of you know you might speak to someone and there's something that comes along in in your favor that helps you propel and get you closer to that to that end goal but also leveraging um funding so it's something that i've started to to incorporate in in the recent deal that i've i've uh, got over the line and on the title splitting using friends and family uh, funding from their side and giving them a, a better return than what they're getting uh, through the bank. By doing that, that's also given me the opportunity to push and accelerate my, my uh, acquisition of, of properties faster than using my own money, uh, which is something that I'm looking to leverage a little bit more. 
um, but also the accountability piece and, you know, continuously having those coaching calls and the focus group calls where, you know, making sure, um, you know, you're, you're, that I'm on track um, to, to meet that, that uh, financial independence uh, figure. Brilliant. Well, thanks so much for sharing all of your journey with us today, Andreas. We're very much looking forward to uh, you celebrating your financial security this year. I'm sure it won't be too far away. So keep up the great work. Thanks for being a great member of the community. Pleasure, Christian. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, so we've heard how Andreas has moved very close to his financial security figure there. And uh, we'll dive into some of the points that... uh, were brought up. But before we do that, let's head to Trustpilot. And I'm going to read out a review that we've had from Tina, who says, thank you to Wealth Builders for connecting us to supportive people. We now have trusted professionals we go to for advice, something we didn't have before. And uh, thank you for helping our family. It is appreciated. Talking about those connections again. Well, I mean, look, it's connections. We believe in the who, not how principle if there's a how problem there's always a who at the other end and we're building our big black book of trusted people people who are outstanding in their field their best teachers the best thought leaders and we bring them to our audience and uh, we do so with great gusto because we want uh, not to have to go and google the success but to give us a call to let us know who you're looking for and we'll do our best to find that right who uh, who can help you with integrity and with skill, uh, and who wants to share. And that's what people get surprised about, don't they, more than anything else, is how how open and willing members are to share with each other and experts are to share with our members. And uh, I really love that. And it's good to see Tina as well because she's got, I mean, she mentioned the family. Uh, she'll be definitely one of our prize interviews when Wealth Builders for Families comes up in uh, in the spring. So do register your interest in that. If you're interested in the idea of either being a case study or you're interested in understanding about wealth builders for families, which is bringing financial literacy into the home. It's trying to help you as a parent become a great money role model for your kids with all the lessons, the inspirations, the guidance, the games, a whole raft of things that we're going to be ready as soon as we got the next big project done, Chris, which is um, an interesting one because it actually flows out of one of the first points that Andreas made, which was there was a reason, wasn't there, that he decided to get going. There was a catalyst in his life. Can you remember what he said about that? Well, I remember the pandemic definitely gave him that space, as it did for all of us, just to take a step back. Although I remember at the beginning of pandemic, it was a bit chaotic for many people, but in, in other ways, it allowed us to kind of just reflect really on kind of the path we were on. And certainly that was the case for Andreas there. And, um, you know, he decided he wanted to take a slightly different direction and uh, reached out to Wealth Builders for some support. Mm. Well, the whole thing about the, a catalyst is because I believe, you know, I love a good ROI, Chris, and he is one of my favourites. And it's a reason to overcome inertia because we know that, let's not get scientific about it too much, but Newton's law is an object at rest stays at rest. Uh, What you need to do is be willing to move and to not stay at rest. And often we need a catalyst to do that. And the catalyst is that little poke, a little prod, a little stimulus to get you off your hiney, to get you off your rear end, to get off the the fence because you're getting splinters in your rear end. It's something to do that inspires you into action. Sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. Anyway, his was a positive reason to a negative outcome or a negative scenario, which is the pandemic. And uh, I'm pleased to say, Chris, that over the coming weeks, I'm preparing for a very big event, uh, which is uh, promoted by one of our the friends of Wealth Builders called Action Coach. So Action Coach are the world's biggest community of business coaches, and they operate very strongly in the UK. And they've invited me to speak at something called BizX, B-I-Z, capital X. It's got to be American sounding if it's going to be impactful, I guess. So BizX, which is uh, on the 30, 
uh, the end of April, the end of March, beginning of April, 31st of March, 1st of April. <clears throat> and I'll be delighted to be sharing a message to, I think, around 2,000 business owners live, which is, you know, hoping to make an impact there and to get businesses to, to look at their business in a completely new way. Um, and with the pandemic and the floods and the storms and the Brexit and the Megxit and the every other kind of thing, the whole kind of pandemic, which has calmed down again, but there's an endemic problem, which is so many business owners get caught up in the day-to-day -day of doing the work, trading time for money. And we've heard that many times, working in the business, not on the business, all the usual cliches. But the point that I'm going to address is to how business owners can create recurring income inside their business, because we know they love to be inside their business, but also to use some of the profits that they're making to create wealth outside of the business. So they get used to the skills of being a wealth builder so that if they do sell their business or part of their business or retire from their business, they've got the real skill to be able to harness, to be able to create continuing wealth for themselves and their families in the future. So that's looking at your business in a new way and very much looking forward to sharing that. And what we're also hoping is we'll get a few hints and tips from the, some of the UK action coaches who are also involved in some way in the Wealth Builder community, Chris. And we've got a secret as well, haven't we? We've got a rather big surprise coming up where the founder of Action Coach, a guy called uh, Brad Sugars, um, will be coming for an interview with us in the uh, very recent, uh, very near future. Very, very near future indeed. And um, and the reason for that is because you're co-authoring a book. That's right. So co-authored a book with Brad called The Wealth Coach. Um, and definitely I'm creating that awareness for myself as the UK kind of business wealth coach working for the business, uh, working with the business owners. I'm pleased to do that. But Brad's got a fantastic story as the founder of Action Coach. And I think that it's turning over hundreds of millions uh, pounds a year. So very, very experienced business owner with lots of great uh, hints and tips and inspirations to share for our business owner community and for anybody who's building wealth to listen from those who've been there and done that. And they can share something that you can pick up. And as always, Chris, we'll pick up on the lessons uh, straight afterwards and try and help you to work out, well, what can you learn from the various action coaches we speak to? Um, and also from Brad Sugars himself. So as I said, we're trying to bring you the best teachers and the best thought leaders in the world uh, and bring them to help you get a lesson to how you can accelerate your own wealth. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to to those insights. And of course, you know, at Wealth Builders, our, our kind of core IP is around the seven pillars of wealth. So whilst Andreas has kind of followed the property pillar, which is just one of those seven. We're just talking about business specifically, mm -hmm. but you know, there's there's a there's a raft of different areas that people can focus on, and it's all about finding the right fit for them. So whether that's leveraging existing assets, the traditional assets as we call them, your home, your pension, your investments, or it's looking at the entrepreneurial assets, which are building a property portfolio, building a business, creating IP from your knowledge, and then working with others as the joint venture pillar. But you can combine them, and that's the fun part about this whole process. Is this you, Chris, telling me you know what the IP <laughs> of Wealth Builders is? <laughs> Sounds like you even know them off of what? Oh, I've been doing my studying, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well done you. So, no, it's, it's great. We're looking forward to that. Chris, if somebody wants a copy of my co-authored book with Brad Sugars, how would they register their interest in that? Um, well, uh, a copy, so uh, maybe to so they can order one. Um, yeah, it's 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 published. Yeah, I can't yeah. give them away. <laughs> but I can't. Well, we we can definitely point people towards that. So um, I think the best place would be heading to wealthbuilders.co.uk forward slash wealth coach, all one word, because that's the title of the book, and yep. uh, we'll put all the details of how you can get uh, a copy on there, and we'll see if we can put some bonuses of some sort there as well. We have to do that. If you come through the Wealth Builder channels, you know, you're better to buy a copy of the book and we'd love you to do that. But we'll give you so much more value than that. I think it's less than a tenner, Chris. So sure. for less than a tenner, yeah. we'll, we'll give at least 20 quid's worth of additional value 
um, so that, you know, it's going to be a no-brainer for you. So uh, looking forward to, to that coming out, looking forward to the interview with Brad, looking forward to the interview, hopefully with some of our UK uh, coaches, you know, the, the people who are doing it every single day in their day-to-day coaching, and hopefully all of them can share some lessons in addition to the lessons shared by Andreas, which we thank him for. And uh, looking forward to seeing you on a podcast sometime soon, Chris. Yes, indeed. So thanks for tuning in today. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, Kevin, we'll catch up same time, same place next week. And until then, my friend, see ya. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget that we are constantly updating our resources inside the Wealth Builders membership site to help you create, build and protect your wealth. Head over to wealthbuilders.co.uk slash membership right now for free access. That's wealthbuilders.co.uk slash membership.